of geometrical properties of your coin area sure. to basically do that. Now, the trade-off there, and then of course you put your finger stem thing back on, and you basically goop your eyes with the equivalent of almost Vaseline, this big, thick, goopy eye drop. And so you go about a day with that, so it kind of forms a little, your eye heals really fast, actually. And then, you know, for some people, then they can see halos, at least early on, if it heals and you stop seeing halos, um, you know, in darker, dim light conditions. Um, and also, it feels like, for some people, like sandpaper on their eyelids. And that's probably the one that most people complain the most about. A little bit of haloing, when you look at a light source, you see like a glow. But the other is, it's just, it's uncomfortable. I never had that problem, so I'm just saying. So, so I just, don't, don't skip on that one. If you ever go to that route. I'm not trying to scare you away from it. It looks horrid, but the whole process is five minutes. It's really quick. I mean, uh, it's just a quick, quick, quick jump. <clears throat> and they load you up on Demerol, oral Demerol, <laughs> and some medallions. So you're just like, oh, yeah, take it all out. Take it out, baby. You know, so. <laughs> you're awake while they cut that away? Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, I, I watched this video. This you don't care, though, because you're so loaded on uh, <laughs> medication. Right. They, because they don't want you blinking, but they want you awake. They this need you to be awake. This kid in my in my in one of my classes, like a health class in high school, brought in this video of him getting, uh, I don't know what the name of the surgery is, but he got his corneas replaced with a cadaver. Oh yeah, then you got corneal replacements, you can have new replacements. Yeah. Watching this video was absolutely terrifying for me. <laughs> Just saying. You gotta think about the eyes, keep your stuff away from well, the eyes. Well, the thing is, when you remove the cornea, or even just lift it to remove the lens inside, this, then when you end up, you got this little, thin little membrane, it was like a sack of fluid. Right. Okay. So if you want to kind of get a sense of it, watch Man vs. Wild, the episode where Bear Grylls is in Iceland. He finds a sheep. The, the, the meat is not good to eat, most likely, but the eyes were still fresh. So he takes an eye. He actually boils it to get rid of you know, any external bacteria. And then he takes a big old bite of it. It's all protein, you know, generally. Mm. And he takes a big old bite, and this like, fluid just like squirts out. It's like... Yeah, it's like a, a water he's like purposefully doing it. He's just, yeah. He's probably, yeah. yeah. And he's just like chewing on that thing. It's just horrible. <laughs> he goes, oh, it tastes like this salty, goopy yeah. tissue. Yeah. They have these teeny tiny scissors at the doctor. Teeny tiny scissors mm -hmm. that he cuts it with. It's like, what is that? Well, they've got a little razor blade that they cut this little an epithelial layer. They cut that off with this little razor and they kind of cut around it and it goes over and heal it back. So it sounds like what you're saying is that LASIK is only for people who have myopic eyesight? Yes. So it's not possible? It's, it's hard to steepen it. It's hard to steepen it to the right. razor. But wouldn't black. you just have to be able to, to cut away around the outside? Yes, essentially. I mean, that just seems like... Yeah. And if and you're and, and if you're really astigmatic, so you've got to warp it, then they can flatten it too. Yeah. Uh, there are some new approaches now where they put an artificial lens inside. Now that's all real, real. That postdates LASIK. the least amount of complications. The astigma lens is basically a toroid. So now you gotta put it in and you gotta get it rotated just right. If it's mm -hmm. off even just a couple degrees, you may be seeing worse warpage or a very uncomfortable warpage compared to what you're used to. And that might be even worse. And that's always gonna be people's choice. If nobody's out there forcing yeah. it, you don't have to make sure that it's And it's a spherical lenses are much more forgiving because even if it's a little bit off as it's healing, it doesn't, you're, you're not gonna, your, your uh, probability of success is much less high. I can't imagine doing that with astigma lenses. Okay. okay. How does it work for for the pictures that they used to sell at the mall? You know, the unfocused your eyes and see an ugly shape. Of, you know, oh God. What is that? Those don't work. I've never seen any work. I've tried to do it. I've tried. 
ride for oh, hours and hours to the stick mm -hmm. figure and make people sit there for hours and hours. Oh, it's dairy ranch. I don't know exactly what it is, but Third Eye. Um, the key to that is supposed to be that you have to relax your muscles completely yeah. as much as possible to take out the shake. So I think part of it is visual perspective because your eye fills in gaps. And part of it is the image that you're focusing on is a distant image. So you're sitting up close, okay? In order to focus on the, on the noise or the gobbledygook, your eye has to be looking right at it. But you relax your eye so you don't put in, so that's not in focus. And the only thing that's in focus is the haze image underneath it. So your eye picks up uh, a perceived image that is much farther away than the object you're looking at. And there are oftentimes layers, so you have to basically construct an image focused at different lengths, and then put a bunch of crud over the top of it. I don't know how they actually do it. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, that's, so your eye has to focus on something farther away. So within this crud and noise, you're picking out something that's out here. So when you push your eyes. And then they make it three dimensional, and that's even more bizarre. And it's different from GI, but yeah. It doesn't seem like I'm relaxing my eyes. It seems like I'm having to do work to just help it. You like are I'm doing work because you're brain. fighting your involuntary response to look up close. But am I physically flattening out my lens with those little muscles in my eye, the little blurs things, rather than? Well, if you think in terms of forces, you're decreasing the tension, but you're doing it against your own autonomic. And, but there's another part of it. You're also, you're, you're taking away your stereo uh, bifocal effect as well, or bi optical effect. So you're relaxing your eye, and you're also pulling, trying to pull your, um, as you approach, as you look at distant objects, you see more parallel, as opposed to at a steeper or acute angle. And so part of what you're doing is also trying to, trying to guide your eyes so they're looking straight rather than this way, and so you're also taking it out of focus. It's not just purely the accommodation, it's also the point of focus. Yeah, the thing that I was that I was reaching for in that question was whether or not when I go blurry, that's actually my relax, and if I'm constantly always working to do it. It is your relaxer, but you're working to achieve it. And I, I, I liken it to playing, to taking golf lessons. Lessons one time when I was working out like crazy, I took golf lessons and so I'm up addressing the ball and the guy, the golf coach is like, okay, I want you to relax. Oh no. He says, okay, no, go ahead and relax now. And after about five minutes of telling me to relax, I said, dude, this is relax. I didn't get any better than this. And maybe I'm wound up tight or whatever, but this is relax. And I work with you, all right, well, that's as relaxing as I can go with it. Um, but it's hard to relax your muscles. Right. And actually, your muscles are still burning energy while you're relaxing. So you think on a physiological level, you're having to decrease the electrical response of your, um, what I call action potential, so that you minimize the signal to generate calcium coming out of your cells, which initiate contraction. So you're trying to fight all of these leakages of calcium <laughs> in your muscles. <laughs> Uh, and so, perceptively, it probably does feel more, or you are doing work in a sense. Well, I, I kind of want to go now and get my eyes dilated and see what it looks like if it looks like. Most people are eyes. not healthy vision, but if you're slightly hypermetropic, it doesn't matter. As long as it's just a little bit. But I mean, like, I want to see my face. I want sure, to sure, sure. know it's, where it's it pretty cheap to get just an optometry appointment. Don't go to an ophthalmologist, yeah. pay 10 times as much. and. They don't do any more for you. I mean, their 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 uh, specialty is eye diseases and injury and surgery. They you don't want them. You're wasting your money. You know, you don't go to a Mercedes and say just to get your ornament done. Well, you can, but you know, you're doing it because you want to spend money. Good to remember.
can't see any of it at all anymore because you're blue sided sided and your yeah. eyes are just closed. You betcha. And so you gotta wear eyeglasses just to see the difference. If all you can do is flex if flexing all, all it can accomplish is increasing your focal distance, it's just making it further behind your retina, right? So well, it's actually bringing it in closer. Um, it's um, it's bringing it in closer to your retina. No, well, on, on far side where we where we said that it was like negative point one five. So meter. if if this is a myopia, <laughs> um, a hypermetropic person focuses back here. Right. So increasing the power brings it in this way. Sure. Whereas when you're high, when you're myopic, you got to flatten it out, decrease the power to bring it back this way. So if you're seeing out here, and your eye can't accommodate, it can't bring it in. You're just stuck out here, and so you need a lens. If your lens doesn't do it, if you're flattening in, chances are if you're significantly far sighted anyway, then just to alleviate cost of it, you probably wear eyeglasses. Or indeed. Where do you go? Your eyes get tired. Well, you won't know if you're farsighted unless you go to a doctor. Uh, but the key, or the, the big physiological clue, the counterindication again, would be that your eyes get tired just during the day, or they feel like they're starting to get heavier. So if you get temperatures that your entire life, then you would think that you're getting more pills. You betcha. You got, when you go to the doctor, they're like, oh, look at that. You wouldn't right. know otherwise. The, uh, which is why people get treated more likely for myopia than they do for hypermetropia, because you can go your whole life and not even know it until you start having problems reading it earlier than you would otherwise. So what if it were easier to get that your vision was blurry than focus? Because we were just talking about how you're that's blurry. that's probably farsighted. That's probably hypermetropia. If you have myopia, then you're incapable of relaxing the lens at all. So it's not a focus to focal distance to be out there. Oh, it's easy to contract, but you're limited by your ability to relax. Gotcha. Yeah, so it's bizarre. It's interesting. It's kind of fun. Yeah. But how would it have changed for a uh, autofocal for the camera? Well, they just need the lens. Yeah, you just need the image distance. When you got out of focus for the camera, you do the opposite. You move the you move the lens, which doesn't change your actual power. It's just too hard to change that. Again, same reason you don't have eyeglasses that get adjusted that way. Hmm. Okay, so you know the you best way to do eyeglasses are on a little thing where the lens is <laughs> There you go. Absolutely. And I get a little complicated for what you need, but yeah. So no, actually, the better way to do it is to develop an optical material that increases or decreases the index of refraction or the uh, the prop the optical properties of the lens itself with electric electricity. So you could adjust with a little resistance. So you have to have a battery for your eyeglasses, but you could adjust with a little resistance uh, the index of refraction. Um, and that way you could, you know, for the same curvature, changing the index of the the strength of the material itself, the ability to bend the lens, 